A Midsummer Night's Dream. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. Your grace. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. My lord. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case, if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death, or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, whether, if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun, for I to be in shady cloister mewed, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. I take time to pause, and by the next new moon... Upon that day, either prepare to die, or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander, true he hath my love. And she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he as well possessed. My love is more than his, and, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nida's daughter Helena and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. But being over full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourself. With duty and desire we follow you. Now, now, my love, why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? They're like for want of rain, which I could well beteem them from the tempest of my eyes. I me, mean, for aught that I could ever read, the course of true love never did run smooth. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. Oh. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. Oh. <laughs> if thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. And in the wood, a league without the town, there will I stay for thee. Oh, my good Lysander. I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow. 
in that same place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Oh, keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair? That fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes are load stars and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear, when wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, and yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such skill. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will... You are minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass, a time that lovers' flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet. And then from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us. Good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight from lover's food. Tomorrow, deep midnight. Oh, I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius, dote on you. <laughs> How happy some, or other some, can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? You were best to call him generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. Well, first would be to quince say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Master, spread yourself. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready? Nick I'm for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. Ah, that will ask some tears in the true performer of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move stones. I will condole in some measure. To the rest, yet my, my chief humour is for a tyrant. I, I, I could play Hercules, where you're apart, to tear a cat in to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus' car shall shine from far, and make and mar the foolish fates. <laughs> this was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. Francis Flute. This is Hercules' vein, a tyrant's vein. Francis Flute. A lover is uh, more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. That's all one. You shall play it in a mask. And you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe, Thisbe. Ah, Pyramus, my lover dear, thy Thisbe dear, and lady dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus and flute you Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starvelin, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starvelin, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snape, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus's father, myself Thisbe's father. Snug the joiner. 
you the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fitted. Have you the lion? I pray you if it be, give it me. For I am slow of study. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but ring. Oh, let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will... Let him roar again, let him roar again. Terribly, you would fright the Duchess and the ladies, that they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. Well, I grant you, friend, if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will hang you, and I will roar you as gently as a sucking dove. I will roar you. And toward any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus. <laughs> For Pyramus is, is a sweet-faced man, a proper man as one shall see in a summer's day. A most lovely gentleman-like man. Oh, therefore you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. <sighs> but masters, now here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night. And meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There will we rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company, and our device is known. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of properties such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough. Hold or cut bowstrings. How now, spirit? With a wonder you? Over hill, over dale, through bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire. I do wonder everywhere. Swifter than the moon's fear, and I serve the fairy queen to dew her orbs upon the green. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell and wroth, because that she as her attendant hath a lovely boy stolen from Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child knight of his train to trace the forest wild. But she, the force, withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And by fountains clear or spangled starlight sheen, but they do square, that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape in making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he? Thou speakst aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. And sometime learned I in a gossip's bowl, in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I bob, and on her withered dewlap pour the ale. The wisest aunt, telling the saddest tale, sometime for three-foot stool mistaketh me. Then slip I from her bum, down topples she, and Taylor cries and falls into a cough. And then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh. But room fairy here comes over on. And here, my mistress, would that he were gone. By moonlight, proud Titania. Oh, jealous Oberon. Fairy, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry, rash wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here, come from the farthest step of India, but the pursuit of bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer's spring met we on hill in dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, 
or in the beached margin to the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea's contagious fogs, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and crows are fatted with the Murrian flock. The seasons alter, hoary-headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it, then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side, and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood, whom we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will see our moonlight rebels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fair is away. We shall chide that night if I longer stay. Go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed. A certain aim he took and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow. Now marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it Love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make all man or woman madly dote upon the next life creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? Hence, Helena, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. Leave you your power to draw, Demetrius, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not, in plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that do I love you the more. I am your spaniel. And Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. What worse a place can I beg in your love than to be used as you use your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not. Your virtue is my privilege for that. Nor doth this wood lack worlds of company. For you in my respect are all the world. And how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here 
to look on me. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. I, Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and were not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him and he shall seek thy love. Mm. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where on the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enamel skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. and a fairy song. Then for the third part of a minute, hence, sing me now asleep. Then to your offices and let me rest. You spotted snakes with double tongue, thorny hedgehogs be not seen. Newts and blind worms do no wrong. Come not near our fairy queen. Yellow man with melody, singing a sweet lullaby. La 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 or cat or bear, pard or boar with bristled hair in thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Bottom, flute, quince, snout, snug and starveling meet in the wood to rehearse their play. Puck finds them there and frightens them away with his magic when he plants a donkey's head on bottom and leaves him there under a fairy spell disguised as an ass. I see there, knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to frighten me if they could. I will walk up and down here and I will sing that they shall hear I'm not afraid. The wolves. 
so cock so black of you with orange tawny bill the throstle with his note so true the wren with little quill <coughs> What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. On the first view to say, to swear I love thee. Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. If I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth and mustard seed. Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs and mulberries. <coughs> the honey bags steal from the humble bees, and for night tapers crop their waxen thighs and light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes to have my love to bed <coughs> and to arise and pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Not to him, elves, and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal, hail. 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 Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. <coughs> <sighs> Tie up my love's tongue, Bring him silently. it was that next came in her eye which she must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit! My mistress with a monster is in love. Near to her close and consecrated bower, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus' nuptial day. The shallowest thick skin of that barren salt forsook his scene and entered in a break. When I did him a disadvantage take, an ass's mole I fixed on his head. When they him spy, away his fellows fly. When in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straightway loved an ass. This falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet let the Athenian's eyes with the love juices I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked a force, she must be eyed. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. It is Demetrius still pursuing Hermia through the wood. By mistake, Puck has anointed Lysander's eyes with the love charm, and as a result, Lysander is now in love with Helena. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love sight. About the wood goes swifter than the wind, and Helen of Athens look thou find. All fancy sick she is and pale of cheer. By some illusion see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from a tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, let us shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand. 
and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond passion see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once who one. That must needs be sport alone. And those things do best please me that before preposterously. Helena, why should you think that I should woo in scorn? You do advance your cunning more and more, Lysander. These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her all? I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now you give her all. Demetrius loves her and he loves not you. Oh, Helen, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine iron? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe in show thy lips, those kissing cherries, tempting grow. Oh, spite. Oh, hell. I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. You both are rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, for you love Hermia. With all my heart in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone, and now to Helen is it home returned, there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Look where thy love comes, yonder is Hermia. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander found. My near, I thank it, brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why seek'st thou me? Could not this make thee know the hate I bear thee, bad me leave thee so? Speak not as you think. It cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, is all the counsel that we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent, is all forgot. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial. And wherefore doth Lysander tender me for sooth affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? I understand not what you mean by this. I make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. But fare ye well. Tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Helena, I love thee by my life, I do. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. My son, the wet, who tends all this? Hang off, thou cat, thou burr. Hermia, let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I'll not trust thy word. Oh, Helena, you juggler, you canker blossom. You thief of love! What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you... Puppet? Why so? Aye, that way goes the game. Now are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maple? Oh, speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. Oh, I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrewishness. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. Oh, save that in love unto Demetrius, I, I told him of your stealth unto this wood. To Athens will I bear my folly back. And follow you no further. Let me go. Why get you gone? Who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide. Then follow, if thou darest, to try whose right, or thine or mine, is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. You, mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you, I, nor longer stay in your cursed company. 
Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. I am amazed and know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakes, or else commits thy neighbor is willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he had on? Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hi there for Robin, overcast the night. The starry welkin cover thou anon. With drooping fog as black as Acheron. And lead these testy rivals astray as one come not within another's way. And from each other look thou lead them thus still o'er their brows beating. Sleep with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property to take from thence all error with his might, and make his eyeballs roll with wonted sight. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. flowery bed, while I thy amiable cheeks do coil, and stick musk roses in thy sleek, smooth head, and kiss thy fair, large ears, my gentle joy. <coughs> what, wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongs and the bones. <laughs> Say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat? Truly a peck of provender. I, I could munch your good dry oats. Bethinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I had rather have a handful or two of dried peas. But I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I, I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For meeting her of late behind the wood, I did upbraid her and fall out with her, and she in mild terms begged my patience. I then did ask of her her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how my eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Titania, music call, and strike more dead than common sleep of all these five the sense. Now, when thou wakest, with thine own fool's eyes peep. Music! Ho, oh, music! Such as charmeth sleep. Sound music. Come, my queen, take hands with me, and... Rock the ground whereon these sleepers be, now thou and I are new in amity. Fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen, in silence sad trip we after nightshade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. 
The next day, the Duke is out hunting early. Go, one of you, find out the forester. My love shall hear the music of my hounds. Uncouple in the Western Valley, let them go. Dispatch, I say, and find the forester. But soft, what nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here asleep. And this Lysander, this Demetrius is, this Helena, old Nido's Helena. I wonder of their being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the right of May. But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Go bid the huntsmen wake them with their horns. <laughs> Good morrow, friends. St. Valentine is past. Oh, oh, pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world? My lord, I shall reply amazedly. Half sleep, half waking. I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law... Enough, be... enough, my lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose, hither to this wood. But, my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia melted as the snow, and all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye, is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia. Now I do wish her, love her, long for her, and will forevermore be true to her. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Aegeus, I will overbear your will, for in the temple by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens. Three and three, we'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. What dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after-supper and bedtime? Where is our usual manager of mirth? Call Philostrate. Sure, mighty Theseus. Say, what abridgments have you for this evening? What mask? What music? There is a brief how many sports are ripe. Make choice of which your highness will see first. A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical. Tedious and brief. How shall we find the concord of this discord? <laughs> a play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious. For in all the play there is not one word apt, one player fitty. Now what are they that do play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never laboured in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with the same play against your nuptials. And we will hear it. No, my noble lord, it is not for you. I have heard it over. I will hear that play. For never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go bring them in and take your places, ladies. If we offend, it is with our good will. That you should think we come not to offend, but with good will. To show our simple skill, that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we come but in despite. Or we do not come as minding to content you, our true intent is. Or oh, for your delight, we are not here. That you should here repent you, the actors are at hand. And by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow does not stand upon points. <laughs> he hath rid his prologue like a rough coat. He knows not the stops. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Oi. One stout boy name, present a wall. And such a wall as I would have you think that adding it a cranny doll or chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often, very secretly. 
This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I on that same wall. The truth is so, and this my cranny is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? It is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. <laughs> Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. Oh, Grimlock Knight, oh, night with you so black. O oh, night, whichever art when day is not, I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh wall, O oh sweet, O oh lovely wall, that stands between our father's ground and mine, thou wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet, O oh lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. Chink, chink. Oh. Thanks, courteous wall, Jove shield thee well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see. Oh, wicked wall! Oh. <laughs> whom I see no bliss. Curse be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. <laughs> no, no, in truth, sir, it should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see, it will fall pat, as I told you, and yonder she comes. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love! Thou art my love, I think. Think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace, and like Lemander am I trusty still. And I lie kill him till the fates me kill. Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. I kiss the walls all, not your lips at all. <laughs> Wilt thou at Ninny's tomb? Ninus. Hmm? Ninus. Wilt thou at Ninus tomb meet me straightway? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Thus have I all my part discharged so, and being done, thus all away doth go. <laughs> this is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. Well, if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. <laughs> oh, here come two noble beasts in, a man and a lion. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear, the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor may now perchance both quake and tremble here. When lion rough in wildest rage doth roar, they know that I, one snug, the joiner am. A lion fell, nor else no lion's dam. A very gentle beast and of a good country. The <laughs> very best of the beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. <laughs> Let us listen to the moon. This lanthorn doth the ornate moon present. Myself, the man in the moon, do seem to be. <laughs> Proceed, moon. Well, all that I have to say is to tell you that the lanthorn is the moon. I, the man in the moon. This thorn bush, my thorn bush, this dog, my dog. Why, all these should be in the lanthorn, for all these are in the moon. <laughs> but silence, here comes this bee. This is old Ninny's tomb. Ninus. Ninus. Ninus tomb? Where is my love? Oh, uh, mm. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Well run, Fisbee. Well shall moon. <laughs> Truly the moon shines with a good grace. <laughs> <laughs> well must lion. And then came Pyramus. And so the lion vanished. <laughs> Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest Thisbe's sight. But stay, O oh, spite! But mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here? Eyes, do you see? How can it be? O oh, dainty duck, O oh, dear, thy mantle good, what stain with blood? Approach ye furies fell, O oh, fates, come, come, cut thread and thrum, quail, crush, conclude and quell. Come, tears confound, out sword and wound, thus die I, thus, thus, thus.
us. Now am I dead, now am I fled, my soul is in the sky, tongue lose thy light, moon take thy flight, take thy flight. Now die, 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 die. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pinamus, arise! Speak, speak! Quite dumb. Dead? Dead? A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. These lily lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks, are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan. His eyes were as green as leeks. Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword, come blade my breast in brew. And fell friends, thus this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Moonshine and lion are left to bury the dead. Aye, and wall too. <laughs> no, no, I assure you the wall is down that parted their fathers. Uh, will it please you to see the epilogue? Or to hear a burgomask dance between two of our company. No epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. <laughs> the iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. Lovers to bed, it is almost fairy time. Through the house give glimmering light by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar. And this ditty after me, sing and dance it trippingly. Hand in hand with fairy grace, will we sing and bless this place. Now until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray. To the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be. And the issue there create, ever shall be fortunate. So shall all the couples three, ever true in loving be. With this field you consecrate, every fairy take his gate, and each several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace. Ever shall in safety rest, and the owner of it blessed. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar calls. So good morning to you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends.